Hello, welcome back Cloud Scholars. I'm your host Kieran Tross and this video is going to be a two-part video where I'm going to talk about um, how the, the final and the goal is to really get you to uh, set up Azure AD Connect. So um, this involves setting up an on-prem infrastructure to speak back to our cloud environment. Uh, so the four steps um, that we're going to cover to reach our objective is one is to create a domain controller and place that within our East US region. Two, set up Active Directory role for that domain controller and promote it to a domain controller, I should say, or that Windows server, I should really say. Uh, then three is uh, once we have this role, we will need to create a service account that we will use to sync to our Azure AD. Plus, we need to have a uh, on on.microsoft.com uh, an account that we can uh, speak to our Azure um, AD and then also have another account which we'll create in uh, AD which is going to speak, um, which is going to allow those, that access as well so the communication is there. And then finally is going to be the Azure AD Connect which is going to um, uh, consist of both of those accounts. So as I go through it, I'm going to tell you exactly what step we're at. Um, uh, in this whole process, but the at the end of the day, we want to make sure that we're doing a uh, password synchronization and that we have our users that are on-prem that we're able to utilize and see them um, within the cloud as well. So let's get started with this. Um, first, we're going to go to create and virtual machine. So I'm going to come here to RGECUS DC scholars, domain controller scholars. DC Cloud Scholars Availability Zone Infrastructure. We're going to go standard is fine. We're going to do a 2019 server. Uh, did it take? Uh, what's going on there? Let's see. All right, didn't do that one. Let's see. Okay, now it did. I don't know what's going on there. Um, and then we're going to come down here to username. And our username is going to be scholars admin password. Sorry, can't tell you, but you create your own. Okay, and then we're going to click on next, which is this. Oops, I'm going to go too fast. Change this to standard because you don't really need to spend that much money. Um, networking, we're going to come here. We're going to make sure it's in our East US DC. I have a subnet just for the domain controllers. If you want to do it that way, you can, you don't have to. We see Azure is going to give me a new public IP address, which is fine with me. I'm going to click none right now. I can associate it later with a network security group in another video. Don't worry about that. And I'm just going to click review and create. There's nothing else I really need to go with modify. Um, once that is done, we'll let Azure do its work. Okay, we're done. So we're gonna now go to our VM and log into it. Okay, so our VM was created. Uh, we saw that in our uh, Azure portal. I have logged into the VM right now. Uh, that is, this is supposed to be, this is the Windows Server 2019. Um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually uh, go in and install the Active Directory uh, role to this server. So I'm going to come up here to manage and I'm going to go to add roles and features. Uh, click next. There's two options you get here. You get the remote desktop service installation and then we have the role based or feature based installation. This is the one we're going to choose. Uh, select the server from the server pool. We only have one server so that makes it easier for us. Over here you have a bunch of different roles that you can choose from. right? So there's a whole bunch of different things. You want to make this a print server. You want to give it some uh, remote desktop services. You want to do uh, IIS for like a, uh, you might have like an internal uh, a website you need to set up and you want to run it off this server. What we're going to do is we're going to come here to Active Directory Domain Services. When you click here, it's going to let you know add features that are required for Active Directory ser Domain Services and all this stuff is going to get installed. So we're going to click Add Features and we're going to click on Next. Once you're here, you don't need to make any modifications. You can just click on Next. You could click on next, and then we're gonna say restart destination server automatically if required. We'll click yes on that, and we'll click install.
Okay, what you'll see here is gonna say promote this server to a domain controller. Uh, you wanna definitely click on that option. And then once you click on that option where it says promote this server to a domain controller, you'll see a new window will pop up. Right here, you need to uh, go down to add a new forest because we're not we're not doing anything from existing. This is from scratch. So we're just gonna call it Cloud Scholars. Uh, you know, Cloud Scholars dot local. And click next. And then here you can keep everything in the same option it is, and then we need to have a password here. So the password we're gonna put in here is totally up to you. I already have my password that I'm putting in here. I'm gonna click next. And for this one, we want to make sure that uh, we click next on this. Don't worry about the create delegation, DNS delegation. The NetBIOS name should automatically populate and it should gather everything in front of the dot local. So for us, it was cloud scholars dot local. It should just say cloud. Yep, there it goes. So we click on next. Don't worry about this. You can leave that the way it is. And review options. So what happens is, what in order for this to work, uh, these sends can be exported to a Windows PowerShell script to automate additional installations. So it's, you click here, you can actually see you know how this plays out. Right? I think this is pretty cool in Notepad. It'll just tell you exactly a script for the AD, ADDS deployment. But we're just going to stick with the GUI. So it's gonna install the role, it's gonna install all the uh, uh, prerequisites that we need for that role, the dependencies, and then after it's completed, uh, it's gonna, it should do a reboot. So right here it says all prerequisite checks passed successfully, click install, and then we click install. It's gonna take a little while. Okay, there we have it. It's letting us know it's going to reboot in order for the changes to take effect. So I'll see you when the server starts back up. Okay, so we are back up and running. The server is back online. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come over here. We're going to take a look and see what we have installed. So we start. We're going to Windows Administrative Tools. And you see we have a lot of new services here. And you see it even comes up roles and servers. This one comes up and then DNS as well. We had three before. Now we've got two additional roles. So I like to do my uh, Active Directory a certain way where I just have specific OUs. I don't really like using the built-in ones too much. So I'm just going to say new OU, organizational unit, and I'm just going to call it uh, scholars. Uh, VM, so that's going to be of our virtual machines, and I'm going to say new OU again, and it's going to be scholars. I want to call this one users. So we're going to use this for our users. We're going to put our new users in here, and then I'm also going to do new OU scholars. Service accounts. And I really should have done all of them with the uh, underscore. I'm just an underscore kind of guy. I did programming in a day, so um, let me just do underscore. I like it, this looks better for me. Anyway, all right, cool. So we have scholars, and I don't want to actually let me rename that one. Let me take that out. Service accounts, fine. Uh, wait, hold on. Sorry, I'm a little nitpicky. I'll do it that way because it's just the name and reading it. Okay, so we have VM users, scholars. Uh, use. So we, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say new users on prem ad. I'll just call it on prem. Ed on-prem sync. Let's do that. On-prem 
sync. That's fine. On-prem sync. So on-prem sync is going to be our account that we're going to use for helping us sync back to the cloud. And we're going to make sure we take this off. I'm going to say password never expires. I'm going to click finish. And that's pretty much it. So I want to, you know, for the sake of time, I don't want to keep this video running too long. Uh, one of the next things that we're going to do is we're going to start working on uh, downloading our Azure AD um, Connect. And then once we download Azure AD Connect, next thing we're going to do um, after that is um, make sure that we're able to connect from on-prem to active directory so we have certain steps that are completed in this video which is create a domain controller uh and then uh give it the active directory role so at least you were able to see that if some of you if that was what you came to this video for then that's great but for others who want to be able to see how you set up azure ad connect uh part two is coming right now so thank you for looking at this video um if this video um if you like this video, uh, you thought it was informative, please hit the like and subscribe button. Here at Cloud Scholars, my goal is to get you from scholar to consultant and from consultant to expert. So thank you and see you next time.